happy Sunday, everybody. Chef John Ashton coming to you live from Martha's Vineyard of the East Coast of America. Hey, everybody. It's also Mrs. Spielberg behind the camera. <laughs> Wait there. I'm supposed to say, and the lady behind the camera, now you're actually just up to your head. Uh-huh. I'm part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have ever thought? Who would have ever thought? The, the Mrs. Spielberg and John Chum. I hope everybody had a wonderful week. It's coming towards fall here. Feels really nice on the island. A lot of the tourists have gone home, so it always feels nice on the roads on the island because Martha's Vineyard, we have a lot of tourists come in the summertime. Um, today we're going to go back to an old school uh, crepe. But what I want to show you today is how to classically make them, make sweet, savory, and then I'm going to show you how this one recipe that you can get by visiting the crystalcruises.com, the insider blog, you can get this recipe, how you can do so many things, is to be a big inspiration step today with that said. So let's get stuck in, that's an English term. Um, first of all, eggs. When it comes to cracking eggs, oh thank you, wait there, Mrs. Spielberg. Yeah. I forgot to say, we had some comments last week that we didn't get to. Would you do them first? While sure. I so, um, Carolyn Porter just loves all of your cool tips and she always learns so much from the show. Um, uh, Margot Tannis, um, she got the taste book, which she loves oh, yeah. and she can't wait to try the recipes. Hey, Seth. Um, Diane, uh, Fisher, she made the shrimp pasta with corn cream yesterday and it was amazing. Carol Mills, she's tried so many of the recipes and they've all been great. Still more to go. She really enjoys the show. Um, Jenny Lee Dolan, um, absolutely love the show and us together and loves the recipes. Hello, Sally Hill. Yes. Um, Anna Marie Smith, I think the show should be an hour giving time for you both to have a drink a few times. Hey! Well, I love that Anna Marie. Um, our good friend Darcy said she was looking at a bunch of crystal cruises this past week and dreaming of when we can all cruise again. I could not uh, agree more. And then Maureen Forrester, um, we both are fabulous and bring joy each Sunday. So thank you so much for that, Maureen. And Doug Rutkowski, I take a shot every time John dances and says sausages. Now, Doug, if I did that, I would be intoxicated all week long because he says sausages <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> Talking about the cookbook, this is one of my favorite recipes. This is Harold, and I've learned so much from him. Look at the key lime pie. The photography and uh, the recipes in the book are just sublime. I love this book. You can get it by visiting crystalcruises.com. And Doug, I guess Doug says, every time I say sausages and dance, he takes a shot. Sausages. <laughs> sausages. And uh, one of our loyal followers, Annabelle, is on today, and it's her birthday. So happy hey, birthday, Annabelle. Happy birthday, Annabelle. And crepes is one of her most favorite things. Oh, so. bless. Happy birthday to you, my dear. Okay, let's get stuck in. We've okay. got a lot to do today. Um, eggs. Whenever you're cracking an egg, you always want to crack it on a flat surface. Why we want to do that is we don't want any bacteria, possibly from the outside, to go on the inside. So we crack it onto the, into a glass bowl. We always crack eggs into a bowl. And the reason why we do this, Mrs. Spielberg, is because we, don't, we want to make sure there's no shell. If we was to just crack it, a lot of chefs you see when they're making it on uh, segments and things, they'll just crack it straight into the bowl, but it's straight into the blender or into the mixing bowl when they're cooking. And that's foolish because you can get a piece of shell in there. And there's nothing worse, you know, now that I've got these nice American teeth, there's nothing worse than getting a piece of shell. In the old days when I had the good old Liverpool teeth, it wouldn't even matter, you know? <laughs> Or I should say, the Liverpool tooth. Uh, so we've got a couple of eggs going in there, and they're large eggs. If it was extra, if you only got extra large eggs, please don't worry. You don't actually have to worry about just having them. You know, you could just add a little bit more flour. For this recipe, it's a pretty easy recipe, and I'll show you where you can go wrong. So we're using an all-purpose flour. So let's just stop for a second, because we always talk about what types of flour. We know cake flour has the lowest protein, so cake flour is always going to have a wonderful soft for you, like angel food cake, 7%. We know that all-purpose flour is going to be between 10 to 12%. King Arthur 
profits 11.7, usually or gold medal and Pillsbury about 11%. And then you can go up to your bread flour, which is 14. It doesn't matter whether you use all purpose or bread flour for this, because there's so much liquid, the gluten can't form, so it doesn't really matter. And we'll talk about some other flours and getting uh, having a good time with this when it comes to saving in a second. So I've got one cup of all purpose flour, I've got some melted butter. We always use unsalted metal butter for anyone who possibly hasn't ever tuned in before. The reason why we always use unsalted butter, different manufacturers use different qualities and different amounts of salt, so it's hard to get consistency. With unsalted, we're in charge of the salt, so we can use superior salts and just a small amount in there. Because some recipes you'll see uh, eight tablespoons of butter, which is half a stick, but it doesn't say salted and unsalted, and then it'll say salt in there, so you've always got to be careful. We're using some vanilla essence. I find vanilla essence in crepes, in a dessert crepe, it's almost like a backup singer. It's not the main star. The main star here is the orange, the cognac, the Grand Marnier. However, the, the vanilla essence is a backup singer, so trust me, it does work. Now, when it comes to having fun, say, for instance, you want to do a pina colada crepe, you could add some coconut essence to this, you could add some Malibu to here. If it's around the uh, Christmas time or the holiday season, as some of us celebrate, uh, we could add some a little bit of peppermint to it. We could add some red food colouring, some green food colouring to make holiday-style crepes. So I'm just, you know, as, as we cook together, I always want to open up your creativity as well. That's one of my main goals on the cooking shows, not only to make you laugh, make you smile, but also to inspire you and encourage you. Uh, we're going to use some whole milk. Feel free if you want to you use reduced fat milk as going in. And I'm going to use some water. It's always a combination. Classical crepes is a combination and when we think about crepes crepes do you know do you know god's name crepes Mrs. i do not know me enlighten me please me neither. you no, don't no, no, I do, yeah it was from the 18th century it was a french lace and they used to wear it at funerals and they'd wear it around their armbands and that and that's where the end of it the french lace that's why crepe look like it, it goes like, like this kind of like that it, it, it looks like a little yeah. bird on your shoulder um, we put all the ingredients in the blender i found the blender the quickest way to do this um if you don't have a blender you could use an immersion blender so or if you wanted to do this in a bowl let me just move stuff out of the way if you want to do this just in a bowl have half of the liquid so just add the eggs and then half of the milk and whisk it yeah. deb the difference between vanilla essence and vanilla extract is extract is what we say in america and essence is what they say in england <laughs> are you supposed to ask me the questions <laughs> I want to know today what's everybody's favorite crepe you've ever had and favorite dessert they've ever had on a crystal cruise. Oh, very nice. Okay. okay, here we go. So I'm going to turn this on. I'm doing this back to front. So it only takes about 20 to 30 seconds. Turn it on. And what you'll often find when you use a blender, no matter what blender it is, I use a wearing blender. I love them and I do do some work with them. Just to make sure, uh, um, you'll see it sticks on the sides. Can you oh, see no. the way it's sticking? See? See the way that's sticking to uh -huh. the side? So you always, no matter what type of blender you've got, you just it's always going to be the dry. So just what you want to do is just give it a little push down. It only takes a second just to make sure. And then just turn it back on. And when you turn it back on, just give it another quick whiz. And then Mark, we'll Mark wants to see the eggplant parmesan. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Doug sausages. <laughs> is, is, that, is anyone else playing the take a shot every time he says sausages? By the end of the segment today, Doug's going to be ready for the for, for karaoke at Bulls. <laughs> uh, he is. 
Okay, so um, Mark, you know, um, we are actually planning, I do want to hear from everybody because we're planning October's recipes. We had some great suggestions last week. Please feel free to post your suggestions today because we do want to hear from you. And my goal is, uh, uh, as a chef is to just teach you as much as I can because I know if you're making a great meal, it's going to make people happy. Um, Mrs. Spielberg, what we were taught in the classical, I was classically French taught, we was always passing through a sift. If you don't, you don't want to at home, you don't have to, but I pass it through a sift. And why we do that is we just strain it. See those little bits, classical French, they wouldn't, that wouldn't go. See them little bits in there? Yep. They wouldn't allow that. That would be, I would be in trouble. I used to have a, a French chef, um, what, <laughs> he came uh, to Liverpool and he was the man who taught me and we've got a really close relationship. But when he first come over, he had this um, accent and he was learning English and I was trying to learn French and uh, he would, um, I, the only French English accent I'd ever known was Inspector Clouseau, you know, um, from uh, the Pink Panther. Uh -huh. So his accent always sounded like that and uh, when, I, when he was teaching me crepes he always says, Chez uh, Jean, uh, please do not make my crepe a crap. <laughs> I I'm so sorry. He says, do not make my crap crap. I do not want the crap crap to come out the kitchen. <laughs> and it was just... And we had a bet in the kitchen. There was a classic line from Inspector Clouseau. And please, if you're having a bad day, just type into YouTube. Just type, does your dog bite by Inspector Clouseau. It's one of the best scenes, comedy scenes, I think, ever in a film. And we had a bet who would say to him, uh, does your dog bite? And uh, I remember I made a mess of the crepes one day and uh, I said to him, does your dog bite? And he says, why are you asking me, does my dog bite? <laughs> I made a mess of the crepes. He says, my, my, my puffy little poodle does not bite. <laughs> I love that guy. He taught me so much. Uh, um, okay, now we've got the crepe batter. Wrap this and let it settle. You can make it straight away. You can. I do want to say you can. But they won't be as soft. We want to let the flour just rehydrate. I left this in the fridge overnight. So let's just take a look at the two rows, Mrs. Spielberg. Yeah. Can you see? So you can see when it comes out the fridge, it's going to need a little whisking. So we're just going to whisk this together. So this is, now we've got the crepe batter ready. Now we look at the consistency of that. It's almost like a whole milk, see? Or a whip. Uh, there was a couple questions like about, a, you had said something about um, the gluten couldn't form, but this is not gluten free, right? No, no any like, flour, any, yeah. any, any wheat flour is going right. to have gluten. It just can't form like a bread, so it doesn't matter what protein flour we right. use. It just can't. So basically, it won't matter if you use bread flour and use all purpose. There's so much liquid in there that you, it doesn't matter what flour you use. Okay, so now we've got a dessert crepe batter. You can see that. I just want to show you something, Mrs. Spielberg, while yeah. we're here. Here's the same batter without vanilla essence. So vanilla extract, sorry, I've got to start saying vanilla extract. Without vanilla extract, here's the same batter. Now, if we want to go savory, which we'll go talk more about afterwards, here's some chopped herbs. And we use delicate herbs. When we talk about delicate herbs. Herbs? Herbs. 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 Oh, sausages. <laughs> oh, no, no, Gary, is, Gary is playing, so he probably just did a shot. <laughs> Gary, Gary, oh, Gary. No. Oh. Uh, the, um, the <laughs> everybody's going to be tuning in every week before they watch the football game. Um, I've added some delicate herbs, and when we think about delicate herbs, Mrs. Spielberg, we think about chives, parsley, some fresh thyme, yep. sage and rosemary would be a little bit too strong, and that's how we make a savoury pancake, which we'll go into in a moment. Okay, pancake batter's ready. Let's go over to the stove. Okay. So... I've got the actual um, stove on, just on, on number four on this stove that sometimes likes me and sometimes doesn't. I've got some oil in a non-stick pan. Okay. Um, so when we think about it, we want to get it up to about 500 Fahrenheit. You don't need a thermometer this. We're all You'll know when it's ready when you can just take a little bit of water and it dances on the pan. So I'll normally heat my pan up to, a, to a, about a medium 
for about 10 minutes with a little bit of oil in there and then we'll wipe it out. There's two fats you can use to cooking crepes. You can have butter, which is obviously going to be richer, or you could use some oil. Um, I don't use that much vegetable oil. I always use olive oil. So I use a light olive oil, not an extra virgin. Um, I use light olive oil because I just think it's better for you, you know? Um, <laughs> Anna Marie Smith is wondering why you don't have a crepe pan. Uh, Anna Marie, I do have a crepe pan. <laughs> it's actually in the, in the house. Uh, but I just, I always think the more tools I have or the more certain things that it's going to um, put a, a block in between, a barrier in between someone making it. We have a request for you to show it, show the dance move of when the water hits the pan. The, the dance move. So as you, you get the water, oh yeah, yeah. So you get the water <laughs> out, as you do it, and it goes, <laughs> It's a good sizzle. It is a good sizzle. You know, I really miss cruising. <laughs> I do, honest. I, I just, I miss it so much. I miss all my team members and I miss all our guests. But I can't wait. We're going to get closer. We've been having a request so that our whole cooking party can all join us on a cruise yeah. in 2021. You know what? In 2021, I'd love to see us all on there. The laughing we're doing, especially with Doug and Gary, do you know cricket? <laughs> I hope I don't bump into them before the show. Okay, so let's just do that little bit of a um, little bit of a water test. I'll okay. just do it. So I'll just take a little bit of water. So here's a little bit of water. You can see, watch. So see the way it's dancing? We're ready. Yeah. Okay. Now listen, I want to do a few things today. Um, about, this is about an 11 inch pan, so let's do the first one with a little bit of oil. The easiest way to do this is a, a little bit of oil in a pan, okay. just a little bit around. Can you see just that little bit on there? And that helps with the browning, because we do want to get a browning. Now I, oh, sausages. Oh no. Oh goodness, I put a bit of water in it. <laughs> Always have a cloth. Sausages, live show. Uh, <laughs> It's not a live Sometimes show. we forget that we're actually, I forget sometimes that other this people are right. watching. Because this is how we talk in the kitchen every day. Okay, a third of a cup for this one. It's going to be different amounts for different crepes, but I just want to show you. Let's get that last bit of water. Come on, you little cheesy sausage. Stop it. Let's just get him off. There we go. He's, he's a stubborn oh. one, isn't he? Okay, so here we go. Watch. Tilt the pan. Tilt the pan. And, uh, tilt the pan. Come around and come around, okay? Tilt it yeah. back and forth. So there we go, just like that. It's not hard, and then I'll, with this one, we'll let this cook for a minute. So you want to um, let this go for about, it might take between the first one 30 to 60 seconds. It's a, the first one's always the most stubborn one, to be honest, and then after that, it just gets easier. What we're looking for is around the edges will start to peel. For this one, I'm just going to make one just like this, and then the next one, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put too much batter in purposefully, so you can see that you can recover, because I don't want you to start what you My goal is, I always want to show you how to cook. So let's see, it's starting to pull away from the edges. Can you see that, Mrs. Spielberg? I sure can, and it so, smells heavenly. That's the vanilla, that's mm. the backup singer. So if you think about it, you, you know you've got it. I'm your backup singer. <laughs> when Tom loves singing on stage and he has those backup singers. Oh, no, no. Go back to cooking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. So, look, it's pulling away from the edge. Now, this is, believe it or not, it's not that hot. All we want to do is just turn it over like that. It's as simple like that. About 20 to 30 seconds. Now, I have, look, this is a crepe. That, that this movement is a, made me feel very relaxed. This is, this is a crepe thing. But if I try to get this in the pan, if it's not the flat crepe machine, because I have a crepe How maker. many gadgets do we actually own? This is ridiculous. Well, in the basement, we have <laughs> so many. I have a, an actual one, what you'll see in, in Paris, the crepe, the proper crepe, the electric one. But if I use that, you'll never need them. Okay, and then what we do is we just stack them. So notice the way we stack, stack them on a tray. Very nice. So let's make one on purpose. This one will use some butter. So yep. we've got unsalted butter around the pan, a little bit of, and that makes it more, if you think about it, more unctuous. Uh, for this one, I'll purposely, I'll use a ladle. I'm gonna purposely, you know, this 11 inch pan usually takes about a third of a cup. So this is, uh, I know my ladle is, with all your ladles at home, measure out how much it is. So I know this is half a cup. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now this is gonna have too much, okay, before yep. anybody watches it. Tilt the pan, 
See that's going in, look, I've got too much in there, it's going to be too thick. Just pour it off the excess, pour it off like that. Look at that. So pour it off, and I know what you're thinking, well, what about those lips, John, Jimmy? See, I wouldn't Cookie. like that, because it doesn't so, look clean. But look, you just cut it oh. like that, see? Margaret thinks you make this look so effortless. But it, Margaret, it is, I promise, I promise you. See the way I just cut it off, mm -hmm. just like that? And now you've got your back to a crepe. So about 20, 30 seconds. I just want to show you that, so for you at home, you don't stress out. You so know? you don't have to put anything in between these? Uh, no, these will be okay, the airflow. If you refrigerate them overnight, refrigerate them flat, wrap them in some... Um, Saran. Saran wrap or plastic wrap. Or uh, and you've got a shower, you know, like one of the things for your head, the shower. Really? Yeah, they're brilliant. They're, instead of using all plastic in the environment, those shower cap things are amazing. I think <laughs> Crystal's missing a few. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> do not make my grip a crap. Okay, so what we want to do now is take the uh, take it over, and you can see that this side here is the side what we'd let the public see. So you have two. No, you have two because they're both different colors. Why do so you let the other side see? The other side's gonna, the, the second side is never gonna brown as much. The okay. first side browns more. So this is public, the other side's private. People said they need to cruise more to get more shower caps. <laughs> Amazing. Come on, boy. Does everybody <laughs> feel good? Any more questions before we move on? Do you wanna see another one or what? Wait, I think, I, don't, I think we're all right. We're good, we're okay? Yeah. Move on? Okay, happy days. Okay. That's the crepes. We know how to make them now. Really easy. Same with the savory as well. It'll cook exactly the same way. I'm just gonna, you stay there, I'm going back to here. All right. Just feel bad. Um, so, now we're gonna move on to making the sauce. Um, when I was younger, you know, flambéing is a wonderful thing, and especially for when you're videoing, flambéing always looks marvelous. It's one of those things where it's a great for your ego. You know, you have the flambe and you're there and your shoulders are going. But as you get older, you're like, you just don't want that. And then when you have a $100,000 studio, you don't want to burn it down as well. Or so, singe off your eyebrows. Yeah, I see. <laughs> no, I don't want that. No, I, I okay, don't so either. What I want to do now is just show you, a lot of people are scared of flambe. And this is one of the best ways I find to do it. Um, uh, is I've got the I've got this covered in um, plastic wrap. It's a little bit too small for a shower cap. Uh, <laughs> but what I want to do is, and the reason why I'm doing that is to stop the alcohol from escaping. Normally, if you wanted to at home, you could just go straight out the bottle. Okay. So what we want to do is one of the things I've found uh, with with the lights of alcohol. Oh, I'm backing up. Yeah, of course. If you want to. Uh, one of the things I've found uh, with alcohol in this, the hotter you have the pan, the more the flame's going to get up. Because if you think about it, it's sizzling, it's bubbling. So that evaporation is going to cause the gases to come off, the gases to come off, cause the flame to come off. So if we just take the pan, we just add the alcohol. So now I can see it's sizzling. So it's not a high flame, just see it, a wisp of a flame as such. So at this stage, I've got a small flame that's controllable. Now, if I had that pan on number nine on high heat, yeah, yeah, that would really do something. That would be up here. That's not. So good. whereas that flame is just good. So just we've got the lower the heat, it's not going to do it. Just taking it off the heat. See, it's off the heat here. We're fine. It's metal. It's not under the cupboard. We're fine, okay. and that's done its job. It's just, see, it's just doing its job nicely and coming together. Okay. Yeah. Happy days. Everybody feels good. At this point, we're going to add some orange juice, freshly squeezed. The recipe has some, uh, a lot of orange juices have added sugar. We don't want that. So some orange juice is coming in. And then we're going to add some, about three tablespoons of sugar. Let me just get a tablespoon. About three tablespoons of sugar, Mrs. Spielberg. I'm going to put this bully on as well. Okay. Uh, enter. Three tablespoons of sugar. Now, when you try this at home, feel free of you, at the end, if you think you want a bit more sweeter, feel free to add some yourself. So now we're adding the orange juice to it and we're adding some butter. And the butter gives it this beautiful, silky sauce. 
and you can see this sauce, the crepes can be made a day or two ahead, the batter can be made two days ahead of time, the sauce can be made and refrigerated. Remember, it's always going to go thicker when it goes in the fridge. So it makes making crepes effortless. You just don't want to marry the sauce and the crepe too quick because the crepe, it's, it's going to be like a sponge. It'll just like, oh yeah, get in my belly. So you don't want it like that. Okay, so now we've got the butter in there and we stick that on. And we're just going to let this cook, Mrs. Spielberg. I'll bring that up. I'm going to put this one on number nine as well. And we'll let that cook. The crepes, what we're doing, Mrs. Spielberg, is see the, um, let me put this on to broil. Broil, enter. Great. So the crepes, we fold them into a triangle. So see into a triangle, it's a classic way. Okay. Now, a lot of folks, what they'll do is they make it in the pan, which is fine for one or two people in the pan. But if you've got a whole crowd of people, by the time you get it and pour a load the sauce on it, they're going to have absorbed that. Um, if you've ever been on a crystal cruise and you've been to Waterside, we have Augusto, his name is, isn't mm -hmm. it? Augusto works in Waterside and he's got just the brightest smile and he's hilarious and he always makes the crepes for our guests. And I miss Waterside. We have Remy on one ship and we have Leo on the other. And Augusto is the head weight and he's just so funny and brilliant. Okay, so for folding them, Mrs. Spielberg, I'll just show you how to fold them. So look, when we fold them, we take the crepe, yeah? Yeah. We come down, fold it in half and fold it in half again, and then we have it folded. Okay. okay, so here's the sauce. The sauce we're looking for this to cook, and we're looking for it to get like a jam consistency. Can you see that? I've stole a little bit of butter from the other pan. See that consistency now? See that beautiful consistency? Deborah, I love Carmelo too, he's great. Carmelo is amazing. Um, can you see that consistency? Yeah. So it goes from there, I'll turn this off now. Before? And after. after. And now, at this stage, Mrs. Spielberg, we're going to add some zest. There's a couple of ways you can zest at home an orange. Um, I always say this is a pretty decent investment. This is the old style where you get the zest off. See that old style mm -hmm. one? And this is a channel knife, what we use as well for cocktails, like when we have a, a martini with some lemon and mm. that. So this is a pretty that decent one. Good. If you've got a microplane, feel free if you want to, to use that. For crepe Suzette, I kind of like th this one. I, I like a bit of a bigger piece of orange in there. So now we've got the orange inside. Now the way the recipe, if you look at it at this stage now, we would turn it off. Now I like a little bit more cognac in mine. I love it. But feel free, what I want you to do is I'm gonna add some Grand Marnier, sorry, and some cognac. Grand Marnier is a, is a cognac with um, some uh, orange peels in there. And then we're gonna add some, um, a little bit more cognac and Grand Marnier. Now at this stage, I'd normally turn it off. But what I want you to do at home because you are the Christopher Columbus of your taste buds. Just blow on it and take a taste. And I want you to know if it feels like it's got too much boozy, if it's like too much alcohol, it won't be enough. It, maybe for Doug it'll be fine, for sure. And, and me it'll be fine. And, 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 and uh, Gary it'll be fine. But for you at home, see how you feel. At this stage now, Mrs. Spielberg, we're going to take it, a bit of sugar, okay? Mm -hmm. A little bit of sugar on them. And we're going to just pop these under the broiler. Eugene was wondering what the broil was for. So, yeah. yes, that's where, why um, he put the broil actually, on. You know, credit where it's due. I actually got that tip off Jacques Pepin. Um, I've been blessed. I've done about three or four dinners in my career with Jacques Pepin. You know, where we've gone to locations and I've done a course and he's done a course. And him and Claudia. So, the, the sauce is ready. And just look at the contrast between the two. You can see you've got that nice contrast it takes about seven to ten minutes depends on your stove because you know i've got an inexpensive electric stove which i love to use because if i can succeed with this if anybody's got a nice gas range they're gonna have a jolly good time so we've got the sauce the crepes are broiling that makes them crispy it gives them a little bit of crispiness and what it'll do is it'll stop them from going soggy straight away so as we come down here we can see they're under the broiler. So you can see that they're starting to sizzle. And we just want to get a little bit of browning on there. 
Feel free to brush them with some butter if you really like rich stuff. But we're just getting a little bit of brownness on there. I never thought I'd be like this. <laughs> I mean, I could get down there, but nah. <laughs> Thanks, Mrs. Fielding. You see, they're getting nice and brown. Yeah. See that color? And that really will help them get nice and crispy. Why they're crisp enough, I just want to talk about. With savory crepes, feel free to remove uh, half a cup of the flour and add some whole wheat. Alexa, stop. Feel free to use some. Alexa, stop. Use some buckwheat. Feel free to use some mesa, which we're using in tacos. Even some. Um, uh, so any flowers you want, you add. You don't. You wouldn't need potato starch or anything like that. Okay, we've got a nice brown. Can you see these are nice and brown and crispy? Make it off. Yeah, and it shows you. Let's go over here. Okay. Um, is it okay, everybody? If I take another five to ten minutes of your time, because I've got so many other things I just want to show you. I apologize. Uh, someone did say we should have an hour. Um, at this stage now, I drizzle a little bit of sauce on them. Not too much. A little bit of sauce. Serve these with ice cream, or serve them with some um, whipped cream, maybe spiked with vanilla bean. Um, that's enough. The rest of the sauce, put it into a bowl or put it into a jug and take it to the table. I don't want to add too much because they will lose them. The crepes are going to start to absorb the sauce. Okay, Mrs. Spielberg. Could you use almond flour? Yes, feel free to use um, not fully almond flour. It won't quite set as much, but you can take it about 50 50. Well, half a cup of almond flour. Use some coconut flour as well. Um, let's get on my soapbox a little minute for you. Um, as always, I do want to inspire you. Does everybody feel good about the crepes? Feel free to comment. Whilst we're doing that, Mrs. Spielberg, I want to take a couple of moments just to show you a few quick others what you can do. I'm just going to warm these up for a second. This is my microwave. Okay, first of all, the savory. So if we make a sausage, say for instance, I've been work working on a Sicilian um, braised pork, and this Sicilian braised pork, it's um, it's got it's just left over from what I was working on a recipe. I've got a savory crepe with the herbs in it, and I'm just going to place some of the pork. And you can see it's Sicilian because it's got the raisins. You'll see in Sicilian cooking, you'll see some of the uh, influences from the east. And we just take the crepe, fold the sides, fold it in, and fold it over. And now we've got a savory crepe. We took this and we just served this with some tomato sauce and some herbs. And now we've got a beautiful dinner or a wonderful lunch. Yum. So that's one savory. I just want to go rapid with this one, just yes. to inspire you. Remember, it's still the same crepe recipe. The next one, we took a crepe, we put some speck. Speck is a um, smoked parma ham. But if you've got Virginia ham, if you've got some bacon, you're going to put it down in the center. A sunny side egg, you know, you've got that beautiful sunny side egg. Some chives go on there, Mr. Spielberg. Some pepper goes on there. Nice. And a little, little bit of salt. But just look how we talk. Just the crepe, you know, that totally changes the breakfast or the lunch. You can see the egg, the speck, and we've got some Gruyere cheese underneath. We melted it, but just look at that, okay? Next one, Okay. as we go through. Uh, let's go over to, oh, here's one. So if you've done a batch of crepes, take your cheesecake pan, yeah, your spring mm -hmm. corn pan, just, and then what we're going to do is, we take crepes, Mrs. Spielberg, right? Place one on the bottom, whatever topping if you want, borsan cheese, herb green, cream cheese in there. For this one, I use potato, leeks, and scallops. So I'm going to take a knife and I'll show you just, and you can build up all these layers. So we're just going to cut a piece of this out. And this is a great way to show you how to use a savory, how, to, how it can be savory, but it can also be sweet for the likes of the Baileys. Say for instance, you make a whipped cream with Baileys, but just look at that. Look at all of those layers in there with the leeks and the scallop mousse. Okay, mm. that with a bit of a tomato vinaigrette would be beautiful. And they're local scallops. Local scallops. Here's a quick one for you, just as we finish towards the end of our show. Uh, here's one of the dessert crepes here. We're going to take some 
caramelized apple. So we've got some apple and we've caramelized this in the pan. It's got a, a, it's got sort of a lighter color because it's sat in the fridge overnight. Mm -hmm. We've got some manchego cheese. So some manchego, which is that beautiful cheese from Spain. We're gonna wrap these together. And we just took, we took the, um, what we basically did, Mrs. Spielberg, we took the apples and sauteed them in a little bit of butter, tablespoon of butter, three, three apples, a little bit of lemon juice and sugar. And then what we want to do is, Wrap that up, a little bit of caramel or dolce de leche on the top, see? We've got some dolce de leche mm -hmm. and some almonds and now we've got a dessert in there. So let's just slice that open so we can show you. And this is a beautiful, you can see that's a fantastic, a, a really good one. And then we have the classic, let's just go for the classic. We're on the home run now, guys. Uh, is everybody wanting this dessert? Yep. Classic, which we see in Paris, some Nutella. Take some Nutella, uh, spread it around, just some Nutella. And you always want to have, I always find if you can just give it, take a little bit of Nutella and put it in, a, in your microwave in a bowl for a second, it just helps it. They spread it so easy when you go to Paris is because it's always by the crepe pan. And with the banana, Mrs. Spielberg, what you want to do is just slice it. And this banana is very ripe, let me tell you. You're very ripe, and I'm so glad we got to see you before you went somewhere else. It's not the best banana, but it is a live show. We'll give this one to the neighbors. Take some bananas and put some bananas in there. And then, you ready for the last one? Yeah. The one which I felt was the best of all, the one that I felt, you just going to wrap this and it can go into a quarter. And there you have a... a, a Bit of, ice, bit of ice cream or whipped cream with that. The one that I felt was the best one out of all of them, the one that's going to inspire, I think, is this one. Coming back, I promise. Ready? Yep. Same recipe. Damn. Exactly the same recipe makes the perfect popover. Look at that. And how we did this, we put the oven on 400 Fahrenheit, we heated the popover pan, we brought it out, we sprayed it with some oil, we filled it up three quarters of the way with the same crepe batter recipe without the vanilla essence in there, vanilla extract. We put it in the oven 15 minutes, turned it around, set a timer for another 30 minutes, a bit of Parmesan on the top, about half an ounce of grated cheese, and these just make the perfect popovers. There you have it. As we look across the countertop, look at this. We've got the crepe Suzette, crepe Suzette, scallops and leek with a People mousse. are very interested in this recipe. This one, yeah, that's a great one. Feel free just to have fun with that. That's just scallops, mashed potatoes, leeks and scallops. Brilliant recipe, just classical French. Uh, we've got the ones where I stuffed with pork, tomato sauce, Sicilian. We've got the, uh, the, the, we have the speck with the fried egg, the apple and manchego. We have the Nutella one. And then of course, we have the beautiful popover with exactly the same recipe, just without the vanilla extract with some cheese on top. I hope you enjoyed yourself today. Thank you for tuning in. Hey, if you really love the show and you want to make Facebook a better place, at the end of the show, do a watch party, press share and share it because we want our family to get bigger. We want more positive people. What we need in these times is laughter and love. That's what's important. Next week, Mrs. Spielberg. What are we making? What are we making next week? Next week is going to be fabulous. We're making a Moroccan lamb tagine. Mm. Someone had asked for a tagine, so I said, okay, let's do it. Leg of lamb or some lamb stew meat, slowly cooked. Just How slowly? slowly. That looks just slowly. Like, <laughs> like Barry White. My darling, man. Oh, no, no. Can't get love, <laughs> your love, baby. Uh, it's um, slowly cooked with the, the aromatics of there, but we'll go into why we cook it that way, what the flavors are and how fun it is. We'll make that and then we'll talk about couscous, how to cook the perfect couscous. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Please, please share the show. Keep your comments coming. Write in what you'd like to see next month. I truly appreciate it and I'm sorry I went over. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next week.
Until next time, Doug, sausages. <laughs> One for the road. <laughs> See you soon, everybody. Bye, Bye guys. Have a wonderful day.